Happy Thursday to all of you. I am Sister Daisy of the Daughters of St. Paul for today's reflection from the Gospel Power. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, He rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Dear friends, we often think that the title Christ connotes divinity and that Peter's declaration that Jesus is the Christ is a recognition of his divine nature. Christ, derived from Greek, means the same thing as Messiah, derived from Hebrew. It refers to the Anointed One, the promised descendant of David who would rule as King of Israel and eventually of all the nations. The declaration of Peter is actually subversive and dangerous, for it challenges and threatens not only the rule of Herod Antipas, Tetrarch of Galilee, but also the newly recognized pagan god, the Roman Emperor, whose sanctuary stands at Caesarea Philippi, where this gospel episode takes place. Jesus is about to confront the structure of power of his time, not by exercising power in human and worldly way, but in God's way of self-emptying love. Dear friends, for Mark, it is not only Jesus' being the Christ, the Davidic King, but His being a self-sacrificing King that proves His divinity. And so today, let us pray, Lord Jesus, it is not power, but power emptied upon the cross that manifests Your divinity. For only God can love to that extreme point. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, You have full knowledge of every person, of our national problems and their causes, and you know the longings of our hearts. Lord, in the coming election, help us know and examine the track record and qualifications of candidates. Enlighten us to elect the right public servants to address our national problems, and may they invite public participation in the process. Lord, in the face of election anomalies like vote buying and the use of government funds to campaign, enable us to speak out the truth and act accordingly as upright citizens and practicing Christians, so we can witness in words and actions the faith of 500 years you have gifted to our country. Amen. Amen. 